Hey there. Nobody's on yet, but welcome to uh, <coughs> Rob's uh, Friday Night Fish Fight. Having a little coffee here. I finally got everything all set up. I see there's somebody on. Welcome aboard. We're talking about uh, some of the fishing that's been going on in my neighborhood, um, just southeast of here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ice fishing shacks out there. I haven't gone out myself, but my wife and I believe will at some point when it warms up a bit, we're going to go out. So they've been catching a lot of pike, guys. Um, catching them on uh, minnows. Um, you could also catch them on anything, really. Um, hot dogs. But I like to jig them. Like you just take them. When you're ice fishing, I just jig like a, a spoon or uh, some sort of spinner net, and that's good enough. That shiny and that action, they're going to come and get it. But uh, recently, I've uh, I've been studying up on some dead bait techniques, guys. What we got there? Hey, welcome aboard. I'm having a hard time with my eyesight today. Hey. Uh, well, you're out, channel. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Yeah, I'm just talking about uh, the ice fishing that's been going on in Hoople's Bay. Uh, southeast of where I live, not very far, maybe about like three or four clicks. And why have I not gone out ice fishing? Well, I'm old. I'm cold. I don't like the cold. But still, when it warms up a bit, I am going to go out with my wife and we're going to rent a, a shack for the night, I think. We're going to sit out there overnight and I'm going to be jigging for pike and a walleye is the big spot there. But recently, the guys have been, hey, a wall fishing. Nice to see you. Welcome. I'm just talking about some of the fish in there at Hoople's Bay, near where I live, uh, near Long Sioux, Ontario. Um, the boys have been catching, and the girls have been catching uh, a lot of pike uh, and uh, on minnows and perch, big jumbo perch. Yeah, and I've seen a couple of walleyes now. Traditionally, guys that go out there and they do the walleye fishing. Yeah. Uh, well, no, not minus 71, but it was minus 45 with the wind chill here this morning in the eastern Ontario. And we're in the south part of Ontario, like northern Ontario, like Kirkland Lake this morning. It was uh, minus 40 with the wind chill factor. There was no wind chill factor with the dead air at minus 40. And minus 40, either American or Canadian, it comes out to the same thing, guys. <laughs> the metric system and the, and the Fahrenheit actually meet up at minus 40. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, I didn't, I didn't go out in this cold. My wife is out right now. She's gone to Ottawa shopping, of course. But I, uh, no, I haven't stepped out. I think I took some, well, that's not true. I took, a, I keep a container of uh, roughage, you know, with coffee grounds and peels of potatoes and things like that. And I put it in my garden or in my composter. I went out there and, oh, my God, last night, the wind chill was minus 39. The wind was howling and it was cold. And I went. I don't know if I'm ever going to get back on lake fishing again, <laughs> but uh, I know that in August, not August, April, uh, I'm going to be uh, targeting the carp and uh, catfish and any other kind of fish that might bite my line. But at that time of year, so many things are out of season, guys. I, I do have a March trip planned uh, in Cornwall, Ontario uh, for walleye and uh, brown trout lake trout fishing. Um and that is probably going to start to happen around the 25th of March. I'm going to try and do a few videos. Yeah, minus two, yeah. Oh, Northern Ireland. Hey, that's where my lineage hails from. You know that? Yeah, I did my DNA ancestry. In Northern Ireland, so I can relate. Yeah, minus two. And yeah, that's a nice day here <laughs> in the middle of winter. It's been a mild winter except for these last two, three days. Last two, three days have been like, oh my God, unbearable. Yeah, I'm just I'm just reading the stream, guys. You should come. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my wife is going to England in, in uh next year. So yeah, maybe we can rearrange this trip and I can get over there to Northern Ireland. I could get my citizenship over there if I wanted to, but I, I've been living here in Canada all my life and it just wouldn't make sense. I'd be, I, you know, no matter, I'd be a foreigner no matter how you looked at it. Ugh. But yeah, Ireland's got some amazing uh, 
cart fishing there, and uh, I think they got a good pike fishery too. And probably some nice trout. It's in the north. It's beautiful. From the pictures I've seen of it from my relatives, it's just absolutely stunning. You won't get better scenery. Well, maybe Wales, but Wales is nice, but Northern Ireland probably just as good. My son's up. You guys built the fur. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I got schooled on that there last week, I think, on uh, on my live stream about Vancouver being uh, founded by Irish people. Well, you know, a lot of parts of Canada were founded by Irish and, and Anglophones and Francophones and Icelanders. Icelanders in Manitoba, who settled that part of uh, Canada for us. Now they are our fellow Canadians. Okay, I found out the names. Oh, well, their names for me. Oh, you should see it at work. They have other names for me, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a pretty laid back guy, guys. I do the, I like my fishing. It's more therapeutic. Uh, I see I got a third viewer. Welcome aboard, whoever you are. You're always welcome here. I'm just having a chat about the uh, fishing in Hoople's Bay. And I uh, got sidetracked here on a nice conversation about Northern Ireland. A lot milder there than it is here, especially today. Today it was like this morning, it was like minus 45 when I woke up. And uh, even though I got good windows, there was ice on those windows, uh, and it's unbelievable. It's melting now, and the, the temperature, okay, the temp, sorry, the temperature has um, risen. Uh, it's a minus 18 or 20, somewhere in that ballpark right now. But uh, by tomorrow, we're getting two degrees Celsius. I got a lot of snow on the roof here, guys. Uh, we've had blizzards. We've had snowstorms. We've had cold temperatures. We've It's been quite a wild ride. And we haven't even got to the snowy season yet. That usually starts about now and it continues on until about the end of March. So, yeah, it's like, and I'm getting kind of cabin fever, guys. I want to be out there fishing, uh, for, at least for catfish anyway. Um, but like I say, uh, early March, and depending on the weather, if it gets nicer earlier, I'll go. See, walleye are still in season at that point, and I can go and fish a couple of walleye, and maybe I'll keep one out of, uh, I'll catch a dozen. Uh, but I'll keep one small one that doesn't have eggs in it and that. And I know it's like pre-spawn, but uh, and you're going to get a male or something. I'll take a male, but I won't uh, I won't take a female with all those eggs. Eh? Um, one, at this time of year, I don't even want to take too many. It's like it's still in season, guys. But, uh, you know, the conservation part of me, I want to leave some fish for other folks to, to enjoy and catch. But in that spot, I'm telling you, I've caught some real swanky fish. I've caught like musky, pike, walleye, lake trout, rainbow trout, and brown trout, and channel catfish, and carp. I don't think I've caught anything else there, but, you know, interesting. And that's down at the Robert Sanders uh, Power Dam in Cornwall, so you want to Google it and search it out. That is quite a body of water there, and it's good. And the hot dog works great on the catfish. I haven't caught anything else on it, but I imagine they could probably catch a pike or a musky on there. There's a lot of musky in there. Fast water, musky love that fast water. Uh, I'm just reading some of the uh, feeds there, guys. Uh, be patient with me. While I was, while I was out, when you were a kid, uh, when we were kids, we used to get a lot of pike on bacon. Uh, really? Huh. Well, you know, carp will take bacon too, but I say. That's a little pricey for my bait range. I'm, I'm more into the uh, pack bait, you know, like molasses and the oatmeal and corn and uh, gritty uh, gritty corn and the meal and stuff like that. That's what I like to use. It's cheaper. But the bacon, yeah, it'll work on catfish too. I've seen it. Hot dogs. I haven't caught any hot, uh, hot dogs. I haven't caught any carp on hot dogs. But uh, I know some guys who have. But I haven't had any fortune enough. I've caught it on corn, artificial lure, worm, um, that kind of thing. I've had them take a lure. They'll chase a yellow lure. I had a chartreuse yellow lure, and I was casting for pike, and I got a carp. And it sucked it in, too, so it was a hungry bugger. 
But it, it must have looked like a giant piece of corn or something. It said, I'm not letting that one go away. Of course, I put the carp back unharmed because what am I going to do with that you know, 20 pound carp? I'm not going to eat them. No. Nope, nope, nope. I like the uh, walleyes and the pike and the perch and stuff like that. And trout, of course. Uh, get a nice big brown trout that I'll stake it up and uh, share it with the cat. My wife, though, those big fish, she wants me to put them back. But uh, it's hard to put a big trout back. Um, and I think uh, you folks that are here on the board right now with me know that uh, whenever you're fighting a fish, they get that lactic acid build up in their muscle tissue. And the bigger the fish and the longer you fight them, the less chance they're going to have a survival because of that fight. So you got to keep that in mind. So if you got a big fish and you've been fighting them for a long time, you know, if you can keep them, it's probably best. Uh, it's sad and disappointing that you catch monster fish and you can't put them back. But the reality is that fish is probably going to die anyway. So certain types of fish, uh, like I know that uh, I think walleye, large walleye, if uh, you catch a big walleye and you've been fighting him for any length of time, you might as well keep him because um, you put him back, he's going to die. It's going to expire the stress and uh, all that uh, acid in the muscle tissue is just going to be more than it can overcome. It'll actually freeze its respiratory system, the gill plates, and the stop breathing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm fishing. I'm just reading uh, some of your past posts. I've been bad at following along. Okay, please forgive. I want to do some ice fishing bad. I've never done it really, eh? Uh, I've done it, and I don't want to do it bad. <laughs> of course, I've always done it the hard way, you know, with no shelter, just out on the ice. And uh, when the wind gets howling, boy, so I'll tell you. But mind you, in March, it's quite nice because you drill a hole. Hey, it's jig for pike. You just like that, and man, you get some good size pike. Yeah, and especially in March when I'm ice fishing there, I've done that with the wife, and we've got some nice pike on the St. Lawrence River. And Lake Sessakinica in northern Ontario, not far from Kirkland Lake, we've also done the likewise, and I caught some nice pike on that lake. That lake is super shallow, guys. So if you're ever up going up towards Timmins, Cochrane on that 11, and you see Lake Sessakinica on the right-hand side, I fish that lake. It's really shallow. Uh, and a lot of private homes around it, so access is difficult. So I wouldn't even go off the road looking for it. Uh, there is a public access point, but I don't know where it is. Um, and like I say, it's it's a little lake. It's got some interesting fish in it, but nothing too crazy. And they're all jacks. There's no, I've never caught a big one there. In the St. Lawrence, though, boy, I've caught some monsters. Uh, seen people catching a lot of walleye. With the map slur, with a worm trailer, we call, yeah. Yeah, Xander in Europe, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, I saw the Xanders, I said, hell, that looks like a lot like a walleye. Uh, they're a little different, though. They got a bigger head, it seems. And uh, But I imagine if you felt them, they're probably pretty much the same fish. Uh, I think the Xanders like a little bit more brackish water, I'm not sure. Uh, while I prefer the uh, moving water and that, but I've caught them in brackish water before. But they, uh, they like their uh, cover. So during the daytime, you find them underneath weed covers in shallow lakes or deeper in clear lakes. They'll go deeper, like maybe around 20 feet or so, and they'll stay down there. And you can catch them. Not usually in the afternoon, but just before dusk, they start getting active. And early in the morning, of course. Yeah, the MEPS is amazing. Um, you wouldn't believe it, but MEPS has a zero, right? The tiny, tiny one. And one night... In Long Su, I, uh, I threw that little maps out just for a lark, just to see if anything would grab it. And I caught this monster crappie. Like, this crappie had to be, like, three pounds. It was, like, huge. Um, I put him back. And then, about uh, ten minutes later, I got an awful smash. An awful smash. It was a moonlit night. I remember it well. And uh, I fought for a good... Uh, I would say 25 minutes with this fish because I had light line on. I only had about eight pound test and that zero MEPS black spinner, or it might have been a number one, but it was tiny and a little tiny hoax on it. And I thought, whatever I've got here, I'll be lucky to get it in. So anyway, I, I eventually got it in. And what it was, was a gargantuanic walleye. 
I've never caught a walleye that size on such a tiny little lure in the nighttime. Mind you, it was moonlit night. But wow, you know, that fish got schooled with that little tiny meps. So you're right, that meps uh, is one of the, and you know the shiny, it doesn't have to be shiny. It just needs to make noise. I think they queue up on that noise. So, yeah, while well, you were out to uh, channel, definitely, you make a very valid point with those MEP spinners. And now, I traditionally use plugs, like, you know, your your Bomber Long A's and your Rapalas and that, at night, uh, in swifter water, usually. But I have caught them in, in still water, which is odd, but I have. I'm just going to read some more of the comments. I want to see what uh, you folks are writing here. In the UK, the Xander fishermen mainly fish them at night, too. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'm getting an education on my Xanders. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a Xander was related to a walleye. I'm going to do some research on that. Um, I don't know if, any, if you can eat Xander or not. I'm not sure. If somebody maybe can tell me and what they taste like. Uh, the walleye is a mild-flavored fish here. Uh, I like them smaller. Like on the Ottawa River, you're going to catch them maybe about, I don't know, 18 inches, and that's pretty good eating size. Hey, Team Black Diamond Outdoors. Welcome. Yeah, we're just talking about the ice fishing on the lake uh, here where I live. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. Now, it's very shallow out there, and it's carp water in the summertime. But a dude, don't know the dude's name, Showed up with a picture. He had caught a lake trout. Now, it wasn't huge, but a lake trout in the shallow bay. Yeah, really. But, I mean, the water is cold all around, so I imagine the, even the cold water fish will start roaming. But that is wild. I caught a salmon there one time, a pink salmon. Um, but that was in the fall again, too. But I've also caught rainbow trout out in the middle of the river in August on the top of the water. And on a hot day, like 100 degrees. Crazy. Uh, what we got here? While you were outdoors, the mainland Europeans go nuts. Uh, really? Thank you for letting me know that. So then they're probably about as popular as the walleye over our, here in our area. I know a lot of people like the bass because bass are easier to catch because they're everywhere. Um, but the walleye are a little more tricky. They're kind of selective where they, especially they line up at night in certain areas to feed. Uh, and they're nocturnal feeders. They'll feed during the day, but down deeper usually. Um, Xanders are probably similar. I noticed some of the Xanders that were caught um, in uh, uh, totally awesome fishing. That guy there, Graham, uh, he was fishing in stained water. Uh, it was a pond, so there was no current there, per se. So I paid attention to that. But yeah, the Xander looks an awful lot like a walleye, guys. Team Black Diamond Outdoors are going to be checking out uh, some videos soon. I'll be doing that this afternoon or tonight, actually. i got some things they're going to do a little later on tonight. Yeah, so that's good. I'm not going to stay on too long, guys. I know you guys got uh, other things you got to do, and uh, my wife is going to be coming home soon, and I'm going to have to help her bring in her stuff. She went to Costco in Ottawa, so that is... Probably going to, what's that? I'm just checking out the video there, man. Or not the video, the message. While you're out fishing, I, uh, I've i seen UK fishermen using little goldfish from pet shops as live bait in colored water for Xander. Yeah. Live bait from a pet shop. Ugh. That can contaminate a pond. I'm not making any judgments here. It's really frowned upon here. We would never do that here. We would. Uh, it's okay to get frozen dead bait like sardines and whatever from the from the uh, shop as long as they're dead and frozen, and that's good. But uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources here in Ontario will go absolutely ape shit if you start using goldfish for bait. No, 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 no. They will not allow that to happen. But I'd imagine it's an excellent bait because it's orange, it's going to show up, it's going to be odd to the surrounding environment, so it's going to be picked off like a like any, like a budgie in, in, in the air in the UK or Canada. 
It's a foreign bird, and it's not going to last long. That's interesting. And thank you for, uh, while you're out uh, channel, for informing me on the Xander and giving me good information on that. So it's a, a friend caught an 18-pound pike on 6-pound. Oh, yeah. That must have been uh, quite a challenge. On the, In the springtime here in uh, Ontario, this part of Ontario where I live, we got causeways, and there's little bridges underneath them, little culverts and stuff, and the water comes out of there fairly fast in the spring, and the pike uh, key up in those areas, and you can take spinners or whatever, and, or jigs or whatever, and you will nail. I mean, they're jacks. Like, they're 20 inches long, most of them. There are a few big ones, but mostly jacks, 20 inches long. But you could catch 100 of them. And this spring, I'm going to go out with the GoPro camera, and I'm going to do a little video on that, and you can have a little fun with that. But, yeah, all the pipes, all the culverts are filled with perch and filled with pike and filled with bullheads uh, in the springtime. So you'll catch, but the bullheads are only little tiny ones. I don't know why they're not bigger, but they are like that. I don't bother with them. I go to the deep water and get the big ones. And there's always a chance of getting a channel cat or a carp or a sturgeon or something. Anyway, I'm going to leave it. What's that? English are good at uh, ignoring things like uh, they. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's happened here too. You know, our Saint Lawrence. We got those gobies. Uh, we've got uh, zebra mussels, and uh, oh, my beautiful black cat's coming up. Come on, Moon. Moonbeam. I think she might show her face. She might not. But yeah, we've been neglectful too uh, here as well. And uh, but the thing is, if the conservation officer ever catches you, it's not going to be pretty. You're going to be facing like a twenty-five thousand dollar fine, and they'll take away your car, truck, or whatever the hell you got with you at the time. You can't mess around, not here in Ontario, and I'm sure you can't in the UK either. But the uh, thing is, like, there's so many people fishing, and only so many minute, uh, minute like officers out there to. Uh, to take uh, care of. But I'm going to go, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, visiting uh, the live chat, and I hope you had uh, fun talking about fishing and the Hoople's Bay here near Long Sioux, Ontario. And it's warming up, guys, and April's coming, and I'm looking forward to doing some videos, live videos, uh, fishing. But I'm probably going to do more like uh, uh, normal videos, and maybe I'll do like a live 15-minute segment just to introduce you to the fact that I am fishing. And if you want to check out the videos later, you can't. Thank you very much while you're out, channel, the folks there for stopping by, and uh, Team Black Diamond for popping in, and uh, AWOL Fishing, I think. AWOL Fishing, thank you very much, guys. And I look forward to uh, seeing some of your videos there uh, tonight and today. And uh, we'll see you next week. I guess I'll do another live chat. I'll try and find something interesting to talk about until we actually get out fishing. Take care, everyone.